you for coming today to today's press conference. My name is Jill Ruzica. I'm the Public Information Officer for the County of Lake and for Lake County Office of Emergency Services. Our first speaker today is Lake County Supervisor from District 5, Rob Brown. Good afternoon. Thank you for attending. It's very important that you're here make this information available to those who are beginning the repopulation and rebuilding effort. We're moving forward on repopulation and recovery efforts, which you will hear more about today from the other speakers. The shelter at Napa Fairgrounds in Calistoga is currently being closed. We expect that it will close no later than noon on Thursday. It will be great to have Lake County residents back in Lake County near their hometown communities to start the recovery and healing process. Because of that, we have an emergency housing task force working diligently to make sure that there is emergency housing available for those in need. By the end of the day, there will be a dedicated phone line for those needing housing. We release that number, we'll release that number as soon as it's available. Yesterday, over 260 families were helped at the local assistance center located at Middletown Senior Center Library. Numerous state, local, and state of local, state, and federal agencies were set up along with nonprofit organizations with their sole goal of helping the county residents start the recovery process. As of noon today, 582 families have sought help through the local assistance center. People have been very generous with the donation of items. Returning families will still need donations of cash or gift cards to stores in or near the affected areas. The, time, the need at this time is for volunteers to assist with sorting the many items that have been received so that the, the items can be distributed to residents. Visit www.ncoinc.org to donate and to see all volunteer opportunities. If you, if you, if you should feel the need to assist or need more information, you can call the local call center at 1-888-565-2787 with a live person, or you can visit www.lakecountylac.com. Of course, we're here in Lake County. We, we, we here in Lake County want to extend the deepest gratitude to the first responders, fire and law enforcement who have been working this incident for so many days. We'd like to thank the communities across America for keeping us in their thoughts and prayers and sending generous donations. And thank you to Cal OES and the numerous communities across California who have and continue to send mutual aid to assist us. We are resilient here in Lake County and we will rebuild. Our next speaker will be Mike Smith, Battalion Chief and Public Information Officer for Cal Fire Incident Management Team 3. I'll be commenting on the fire suppression operations and portion of the recovery effort on behalf of the fire department today. The fire's spread has been halted at 76,067 acres and the containment percentage is still 75%. Today there are 3,861 firefighters working on the fire lines, which is a dramatic decrease over just the last few days. Some firefighters are being released from the incident to move on to other fires active across the state. And those that remain continue to strengthen control lines and are beginning to transition into mop-up overhaul operations and restoring the landscape as much as we possibly can to its state prior to this incident. Of particular interest today is the completion or near completion of the work by damage inspection teams across the fire area. This initial survey, which is being supported by a secondary survey that's already underway, has indicated that 1,910 structures have been destroyed by the Valley Fire. Among that number are 1,238 single-family homes, 23 multifamily homes or structures, 64 commercial structures, and 585 other structures, such as sheds, garages, and other small outbuildings. That number, 1,910 total structures, ranks the Valley Fires the third most devastating in California's state history. Our next speaker is Lake County Sheriff Brian Martin. 
Thank you for being here. Um, here with a brief update on repopulation. Our repopulation efforts are continuing. Uh, evacuated areas still include many areas on Cobb Mountain, Anderson Springs, and Harbin Hot Springs. Those evacuations are necessary as there is a combination of ongoing fire activity, fire suppression activity, tree removal, debris removal, and utility restoration projects still in process. I also want to give an update on uh, reported missing persons that have uh, come in since the Valley Fire incident uh, took place. From the beginning of this incident, we had a report of 15 people that uh, had been reported missing. As of this morning, there were only eight that were still unaccounted for, and we have, we have since located six due to the hard work of our Lake County Sheriff's detectives and investigators who work tirelessly to try to locate, locate people. Displayed on the gazebo behind you are pictures of those who have been located since this morning, uh, our community, their friends and their family, and we at the Sheriff's Office are grateful for their safe their safe uh, location. As you will see, there are still two people that are, are have not been accounted for and our efforts are continuing. We have uh, identified a couple of locations that have uh, been searched with cadaver dogs and are gonna require some additional inspection by anthrop anthropological teams. We're hopeful that these people are returned, are located and returned and reunited with their loved ones. We continue to fight our crime, to uh, enact our crime fighting efforts. Despite the efforts of, that's being uh, required of our law enforcement officers in fighting looting activities, there are still people that continue to take advantage of these times. Most recently arrested was the gentleman pictured on the right, who we've had several reports of in the Soda Bay area lurking around the neighborhoods, engaging in very suspicious activity. He's been seen with uh, flashlights at night, running away from locations that were later reported burglarized. Our deputies contacted him and took him into custody for several violations this morning, and our investigation is going to continue to see if he's involved in some of the, the burglaries that have been reported in Soda Bay. I want to continue with the message that we will not tolerate criminal activity in Lake County, and we'll take an especially hard stance during this time of disaster. Thank you. Speaker is the Lake County Health Officer, Dr. Karen Tate. Good afternoon and thank you for being here. I have a number of updates today, uh, but first I'd like to thank the many volunteers and agencies, local, regional, and state who have really come to our assistance to uh, assist us with our medical mission of trying to keep people safe and healthy and stabilize them medically. Uh, first, I do want to reiterate a message that has gone out several times regarding the hazards of ash uh, and debris on burned properties. Uh, there are many hazardous materials that can be found in those, uh, uh, what remains of a, a burnt building, and we're asking property owners to refrain from sifting through it or digging, and rather to take advantage of the professional cleanup organizations that can assist them. Today, I renewed a proclamation of a local health emergency and amended it so that we could facilitate the rapid removal of the obvious ha hazardous materials that may uh, be on these properties. So we will be assisted uh, in the very near future by the EPA, the US EPA, to go onto the properties and to remove things like uh, batteries, propane tanks, damaged containers of solvents, other household waste, uh, anything that poses an immediate hazard to those who might enter the property. Uh, this will pave the way for a subsequent debris removal uh, for which there is a program that property owners can sign up for that makes that property remediation free of charge and it is to a very high standard. Uh, on the medical side, we are maintaining an outpatient clinic at the Twin Pine Casino location, co-located co with the Red Cross Shelter. Uh, that is being operated by the Marin County Medical Reserve Corps, and their hours of operation are from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. They also are coordinating with tribal health to meet the needs of the uh, tribal population uh, uh, who are serving, we are actually uh, being hosted by them at the casino. Uh, I've also been told that the Middletown Family Health Center has reopened. Uh, that's good news. This is a clinic operated by Adventist Health, so many people can now return to their normal uh, site of health care in that location. 
We've received some mutual aid assistance to bring in additional mental health professionals to assist us. And uh, we've had two respond from Sonoma County today and are expecting one from Alameda County later this week. They will be providing counseling services at the local assistance center and at the clinic at Twin Pine Casino. Public Health is going to be offering tetanus shots and uh, we have a tentative schedule arranged for this Friday, yep. 9 to noon at the Twin Pine Casino, um, as well as at the local assistance center in Middletown, and 2 to 4 p.m. at Grace Church in Kelseyville and Moose Lodge. Uh, anybody who's had cuts, burns, um, any kind of injury really should consider taking advantage of this, as well as adults who haven't received a Tdap shot in their adult life, especially if they're going to be around young infants and small children. We have made some mosquito repellent available uh, in limited quantities at the moment at the Twin Pine Casino location and the Middletown Senior Center, and more mosquito repellent is on the way. The purpose for this, of course, is prevention of West Nile virus illness, which uh, is still something that is uh, potentially circulating in the county. Lake Transit is creating a new route to be used specifically by evacuees. Uh, this route is going to be called Route 3, and it will be on Highway 29, uh, from Clear Lake to Deer Park and Hidden Valley Lake, Middletown and Calistoga. This is specifically for evacuees who need to be able to move among those locations and it will be a very welcome opportunity for those who need to travel to the pharmacies and perhaps other clinic services uh, away from the Middletown area. So uh, there are more details to follow in terms of their actual schedule. And finally, um, I'll just put out a plea to correct some misinformation about appliances in which food has spoiled. Unfortunately, the rumor has gone around quite extensively that if food spoils in your refrigerator or freezer, that it is necessary to tape the appliance closed and discard the whole thing. Uh, this is not correct. These appliances, if they're not damaged, can be cleaned, aired out, and put back in service. So I hope that we can save a few refrigerators and freezers. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ryan Arba. He's the Coastal Deputy Regional Administrator of the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. Good afternoon. Governor Brown declared state of emergency on September 13th, 2015 in response to the Valley Fire. Cal OES has been in full operation in the State Operations Center in Sacramento. In addition, we've, op we've activated our Regional Operations Center. We are staffing the Lake County Emergency Operations Center, where we are operating the Joint Information Center with staff from all around the state. In addition, we are also staffing the local assistance centers in Middletown. Yesterday, Governor Brown requested a presidential major disaster declaration for individual assistance following the Valley Fire and Butte Fire, which to date has scorched more than 145,000 acres and taken lives and destroyed thousands of homes and structures. In his letter to the president, Governor Brown outlined the magnitude of the Valley Fire. This letter can be found on our website at www.caloes.com. Ca .gov. Cal OES is joined by partners at local, state, federal, and nonprofit organizations working together to support this county. These partners have been working tirelessly around the clock to provide information to residents of Lake County. We expect to learn more about the state of the presidential declaration in the coming days. Cal OES continues to express a great appreciation for all of the people who are working together to respond to the Valley Fire. We continue to ask for your patience and support as we find our way out of this strong wildfire. Yes. 
that uh, completes our speakers for today. We have several people here behind me that can answer questions for you. We have Jim Comstock, who is the supervisor of District 1. We have Moke Simon, who is the tribal chair of the Middletown Band of uh, Pomo Indians. We have Scott DeLeon uh, from the Department of Public Works, Bill Davidson from Animal Control, Matt Perry from the County Administrative Office, Martin Scheel from the City of Lakeport. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take some questions and what I'd like is to state your name and the agency that you're with. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Larson with Lake County News. I'd like to ask um, a question specifically of Chairman Simon about the um, impacts of the fire on the tribe. You've been very generous helping the community at large. Can you speak a little bit about what your tribal members specifically have dealt with in this fire? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Moke Simon, Tribal Chairman, Milltown Rancheria. Uh, the immediate impact uh, to the Tribal um, Rancheria, there, it, it burned right up to us. It did not uh, burn any homes on the reservation. Uh, the casino was fine. The tribe, we were able to evacuate them out. But we did have five members uh, that lived in the surrounding communities that have lost their homes. We've also had um, 37 employees that work for us that have lost their homes. Um, and we are currently uh, working to house them in our hotel. Uh, once we get that number completed, we do need to use that. We'll also be opening that up for displaced members fire survivors who have lost their home. So our hotel, the only people who will be staying there will be people who have lost their home. So five members of the tribe were affected. Um, they have lost their homes and we're working diligently to uh, get them placed until they can have a permanent solution. I do want to give an update on um, the housing of animals. Uh, we do have an area at the Rancheria that we're currently working with um, Red Cross and um, OES, uh, the governor's office, to get uh, housing for the animals for when our, our uh, community members come back, that they can be somewhere with their pets because everybody knows there are a lot of pets over in Calistoga and people do like to be there with them. We're also having um, daily meetings, like I said, 9 a.m. in the morning and 7 p.m. at night with our local community organizations, uh, everybody who's volunteering. We currently have the food and clothing distribution set up at the Lions Club, um, so that's where we're sending people. Uh, if donations come in, that's where they need to go. Um, and we're looking at, uh, you know, I think there were over uh, 150 families who took advantage of that yesterday, and we know that number is going to climb. Exactly. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions? Jill, can you repeat the question? The first question was about escort services up into the geysers and who she would talk to and who she would call. And the second question is about putting um, trailers on the property as people rebuild. Um, did you want to take that? Or you want to write? We can uh, handle one-on-one -on -one the personal questions about escorts and animals uh, offline. Um, so I'll be available for you as soon as the press conference is over. Regarding the placement of trailers on properties that have, uh, homes that have been lost, uh, that's going to vary depending upon the location, and I can speak to you uh, to that as well. We're working a process right now where folks that are on more rural lands will have an, a better opportunity than those that are actually in the residential subdivisions. We're going to try to, uh, we're working right now with a couple of campgrounds and a couple of the local resorts that were burned down to use their property for placement of trailers so that those, uh, those RVs will be close to the job site 
site, but not specifically on the job site that will impede the efforts of cleanup and rebuild. Simon uh, spoke about earlier, uh, non-monetary donations are being received, food, clothing, and the like at the um, uh, Lions Club Center on Central Park. Central Park, yeah, Central Park Road in, in Middletown. Uh, donations are also being received at the Grace Free Angelical Free, Free Angelical Free Church, Grace Angelical Free Church on Live Oak Drive in Kelseyville. Uh, monetary donations can be made to several uh, organizations. Um, Lake County Rising, which is, uh, you can, uh, uh, they, they have a website, um, Mendel Lake Credit Union, Saving Bank, Savings Bank of Mendocino, and Savings Redwood Savings Bank, um, as well as American Red Cross, specifically, it needs to be specifically stated for the Valley Fire incident. Um, animal uh, food and uh, hay and that type of thing, livestock donations for food can be made directly to Lake County Animal Control, yeah, and, and um, um, North, North Coast Barn, Springs Road, um, Diamond D Ranch, Middletown, and Middletown Animal Hospital. They're dispensing it at all three of those sites. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. All right, if we have no further questions, what we will do is we will break out into small groups and you can ask us specific questions uh, as you like. Wow. So probably most likely in the shade. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 